on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. BitSquare is very gradually catching up with local Bitcoins in terms of crypto trading volumes. Dash is the privacy-focused digital currency that offers transactions with instant confirmations. Its unique decentralized decision-making and self-funding system make it an ideal choice as a stable and secure digital cash. Click the link in the video description to learn more. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of The Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. So let us begin with the market roundup. As always, we turn to coinmarketcap.com for the latest cryptocurrency prices. The biggest winner of the day is Iconomy. That's the second win for the week. Or was it Friday? I can't remember. But today, in the last 24 hours, the Iconomy coin has gained, wait for it, 36.9% of its value. So looking at the long-term trend on CoinMarketCap, it looks relatively flat compared to the recent massive spike. So after that 36.9% increase, it puts an economy token at 31 cents. It's actually 30.9, but I'll round that up. And an economy token carries the symbol ICN. Now, the biggest loser of the day, and uh, this is a regular occurrence these days, is Steam. So Steam has lost 7% of its value in the last 24 hours. And looking at the trend, it kind of had a bit of a run up, but I would say looking at the data that's displayed by this little mini graph, I would say from the beginning to the end of the chart, it's a downtrend, if you're going to call it. So that's that for the biggest winner and the biggest loser. Let's take a look now at the Bitcoin price chart and see what that's doing. So now we've broken above that $780 mark that I was looking for. That's good. We are now trading in the range of $780 to $800. And right now we're at $791. A lot of trading activity going on right now. And you can see here I've drawn this top line at the $800 mark. And then this well bottom line is actually my Fibonacci retracement. The top of it actually, the 100% retracement line, which is around about the $780 mark. And so far since we've broken up through it, it's been tested twice and it's holding. So that $780 mark is based on two data points on my chart. It's holding as support and the price is staying pretty well away from it right now. Now, if you look at the trading volumes, sorry, the trading ranges, the price isn't fluctuating that much in these two latest candlesticks. So I'll, uh, I'll have to put something in the edit to point those out because I'm not pointing to it in my mouse right now because I want to keep the uh, mouse out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. But the most recent high from yesterday was, it's actually marked on the chart here, 900, sorry, 900, $794.39. That was yesterday's high. And let's see if that compares to the high of the last seven days. Yes, it does. Uh, 700, yeah, it's actually higher. So that's the highest we've had in a while. So anyway, that's enough talk about the Bitcoin price chart. Let's get into the news. So today I have turned to the Cointelegraph, Cointelegraph.com, the future of money. Now this article is entitled BitSquare on local Bitcoins trail in the weekly transaction volumes. Now the that headline isn't strictly accurate, which is why I use I changed that headline slightly in this episode to BitSquare is gradually catching up with local Bitcoins. And we'll see why that is. So it starts out by saying the global weekly transaction volume on BitSquare's decentralized platform is gradually picking up, as the latest figures show from Coindance. So I personally check in on Coindance once a day to keep my eye on this very stuff. If you go to Coindance, let me see if I can bring it up here. If you go to Coindance and then if I open up the volume tab, you'll be able to monitor these figures for yourself. So it lists the three major, well, ex decentralized exchanges, local Bitcoins, Paxful, and BitSquare, which is what we're talking about today. Now the article continues by saying, however, there is still a long way to go when compared to Bitcoin's largest online trading marketplace, localbitcoins.com. Well, yes, if we look at 
coin dance here it says that local bitcoins had a volume last week of about 19 million us dollars or the equivalent and that's compared to paxful that did about 2.4 million dollars and bitsquare did just thirty-two thousand dollars so bitsquare is where local bitcoins was about three years ago and to be fair bitsquare is a lot younger so we can forgive it for that paxful however kind of breaks the rules because their growth has been so fast since they were first founded so good for them i'm not going to talk much about paxful today but it's p-a-x-f-u-l if you want to check them out they allow you to exchange bitcoin for all kinds of different value all kinds of different gift cards and all kinds of stuff it's pretty sweet Continuing with the article then, it says, the weekly volume in Europe has the record for the highest amount of transactions, about 40,000 euros. This did not come as a surprise to the platform, according to a statement made to the Cointelegraph, because people are uncovering the potential of this app and they want to support it as an open source project with huge potential. Now, I agree it has huge potential, and after finishing my Ledger Nano S review recently, my attention has now turned to solving the exchange problem. And by that, I mean helping people to avoid losing money when a, an exchange gets hacked. And yes, I have finished my Ledger Nano S review, so stay tuned for that. I plan to release that on Thursday. I also intend to do a video on BitSquare, but I do do a lot of research and testing before, before I put out that kind of a video, because otherwise I'll just be stating the obvious. But I honestly think that this is the next big problem I want to find a solution to. And I believe BitSquare is that solution. Now let's scroll down to a quote from BitSquare's Ben Shishido that says, quote, We are seeing more hacks on centralized exchanges and regulatory environments in some parts of the world are forcing exchanges to turn some of their customers away. Naturally, people are looking for alternatives and BitSquare is here to the rescue. Close quote. It's the same old story, you know. Human behavior operates on incentives. We move away from pain and we move towards gain. That rhymed, so it must be true. So yet again, this is an education problem. The average user wanders into the world of Bitcoin, signs up with Coinbase, and is completely unaware of what they're doing. You know, they don't know what they don't know. And that applies to us all. We do not know what we don't know until we do know, right? or until someone shows us it, or we discover it, or whatever, right? Which to me is why I say to everybody to get educated first. And as always, that's the purpose of Cryptoversity. So let me give you a very, very quick tour of BitSquare right now. And if it piques your interest, you can go ahead and download it yourself and play around with it while you're waiting for my video to come out. So I've already got BitSquare open here somewhere. Here it is. So when you look at BitSquare, you might not realize initially that it was a decentralized exchange because it looks just like an online exchange. It has a depth chart in the middle and it also has order books and so on. And BitSquare even connects via the Tor network, which I find interesting. In the bottom right corner of my screen here, it shows the little onion logo and it shows I'm connected to eight Tor peers. But here's the chicken and egg problem that BitSquare has. I'm right now, I'm looking at the chart that's trading Bitcoin against the British pound. And there's just one person right now willing to buy Bitcoin for British pounds on the left and on the right. There's no orders or people willing to sell Bitcoin for British pounds. Right now, in fact, there's actually more activity in euros than there is in dollars. If I bring up the one uh, here, yep, dollars. That's the other way around. On the dollars tab, there's, there's no offers to buy Bitcoin with US dollars, but there's four or five people willing to sell Bitcoin for US dollars. But then if I switch this to euros, we've got five people willing to sell Bitcoin for euros and, well, 20 odd orders with people willing to buy Bitcoin with euros. Now, if you do decide to play with these yourself, one thing to know is that Bitcoin is the base currency here. So whatever you select from this currency dropdown mem menu, that's what you are trading Bitcoin against, right? So we've got all the major fiat currencies in this list, 
but there's also a load of cryptocurrencies, including like Dash, Monero, Ethereum Core, there's even uh, Zcash, and so on. So whichever one you select is going to trade it against Bitcoin. So that's something I didn't realize when I first started playing with it, but that piece of information will create a lot of clarity when you do start playing with it. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see me do a video about BitSquare. And if you find any innovative ways of using this, then send them in to me uh, for a chance to win a bounty. And as always, when you send in ideas, make sure you include your Bitcoin address so that I can actually pay you the bounty. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From as little as $10 a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future, get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, as well as access a private patrons only chat group where you get direct access to me. But that's all for today, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.